Hey guys, it's Dr. Matt. I wanted to make this instructional video on how to maintain your razor's edge. You know, the main thing that motivated me to do this was I was, uh, uh, some of the guys that I, I honed the razors for said, you know, I'd really like to be able to maintain my razor myself, but I don't want to do all that stuff that I've seen in your videos with the bevel setting and all of that stuff. And I said, look, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to tell you how to do this. What I've done is I've narrowed it down to two stones on how to maintain your razor. You'll be able to keep great edges for years. I'm not talking about bevel setting. You know, first off, as far as setting the bevel, like I said in my bevel setting video, it's a one shot deal. It only needs to be done one time. After that, you're good to go. Uh, so if you have a razor and it shaves, I'm going to assume that the bevel's set on it. So what you're going to be able to do is what I show you how to do here in the video. I've narrowed it down to two stones, uh, most cost effective, uh, not just the stones, but any other kind of little things that you're going to need. So uh, I think this is going to be really great. So I'm going to quit talking. This is going to take me a few minutes. I'll see you on the backside. All right, well, let's get started. What we're going to do is I'm going to take you through maintaining your razor, and we're going to do it with two stones. That's all that I use when I maintain my razors, two stones. First stone we're gonna start with is Shapton 8K. That's all you need. You don't need to go any lower. Uh, the reason that I use the Shapton stones is because it's what I've used for five years. I've used some other stones, tried them. I like Shapton the best. The Norton is a good stone. Uh, you, if you have one of those, you can use it. The reason I don't recommend that one or I didn't use it is because most of the Norton stones, the 8K has a 4K on the other side. And the lower you go in the grit range, the greater chance you have of, uh, you know, messing things up. So what we're going to do, there's two things that you're going to need to do first before you actually take the razor to the stone. And the first thing is you're going to have to know, or you're going to have to learn how to lap the stone or keep this thing flat. All right, real simple. I'll show you how to do this. Uh, what I do is I have this diamond plate with the, with the stone holder and I use it and it works real easy. Uh, but this thing cost $100, the holder's $20, you don't need that. Going with the theme of the video, um, for the least, least amount of price, real simple. Home Depot, $5, piece of granite, that's flat, get yourself a piece of sandpaper, 50 cents. I use a 400 grit and what you do just get the granite wet and you get the sandpaper wet. The sandpaper will stick to it once it's wet. You take your stone, pencil, and you make some marks on there, all right? And then you just put the, the stone down and you rub it back and forth until the, until the marks come off. That's all there is to it. Now, if you wanna check it a little bit further, I have a straight edge, you can check it this way, like that, long ways, um, and that'll also tell you too. So that would be lapping stone, make sure you keep them flat. All right, now the next thing, and the second thing, the other thing that you're going to have to do before actually taking the razor to the stone is you're going to have to figure out if the person who honed the razor before you did used tape on the razor. Some people would use tape. Uh, so I'm not going to get into the, the tape versus no, no tape argument. What I'm suggesting that whatever the person did before you, you follow their lead. So if they use tape, you have to use tape. So what's the easiest way to find out? Ask them. Um, but I realize that that's not always going to be possible. You may not know who it was. Um, or they may not even remember. But I'm going to show you how to do it. It's real simple. What you do, take your razor and you take a Sharpie and you mark the edge of the Sharpie. You just get it black like that. Do it both sides. And then all you do, take your razor on the stone, just lay it real flat. Make sure that the spine is down, the edge is down and you just rub it back and forth a few times like that. Look at the edge. That mark, that black marker should be gone all the way to the edge, all right? If that works, if it does it all the way to the edge, so you can see it a little better, you're golden, all right? But 
There may be times if the person used tape before you and you do this without tape, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a little black line at the edge. So what you're gonna to need to do at that point is you're gonna to need to get a piece of tape, Scotch 3M electrical tape, and you apply it to the spine. I'm gonna show you how to do that. What you do, take and put the tip of the razor on the piece of tape, now center it on there, then stretch it all the way to the back keep it centered and tack it down there and then touch it all the way and just kind of roll the tape around. You have to make sure that there's no kinks in here. All right, so then you just do it again. Rub it back and forth and look to see if that little thin black line has disappeared. If it has, great, you're ready to move on. If there's still a, a, a black line there, you can go to a second layer of tape but I would not suggest going any further. If you need more than two layers of tape, you need to have someone reprofile or set the bevel on it because I don't think that going more than two layers of tape is gonna be great. Okay, so we've lapped the stone. You've determined if the person has used tape. So now we're ready to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a slurry on this 8K stone. You don't need to do this. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes so you can see the slurry and actually what I'm doing. This is just a little DMT, a mini plate. Um, actually, if you want to build a slurry on these, you can. It does make the cutting real quick. Um, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. All right. So, no tape. What you want to do, first off, is I would suggest that what you do here is you kill the edge of the razor. I have a tomato here to, to demonstrate the edge. This, very sharp, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kill the edge. Lightly drag that edge across the corner of the stone. Lightly. That will kill the edge, nothing left, all right? Two reasons, if there's any toothiness on there, but also I like to kill the edge because then I know when I brought it back on the stone. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> when you do this, first off, lay the razor flat. The angle is determined by the thickness of the spine and the width of the blade, so you don't need to try and hold it up or anything like that. You just lay it flat, it's real simple. There's a few different kinds of strokes you can do. I'm gonna demonstrate the three different ones because I use them all. Uh, first one, half strokes. I consider this to be the most aggressive, just back and forth. I'm applying a little bit of pressure here, and you can see right away that's turning black. That's why I wanted to put the slurry on there. And I'm pitching the, the razor different angles just to kind of smooth out those, the scratch marks. Go back the other way. If you do half strokes, just make sure you kind of do the same amount on both sides. All right, next, circles. Real simple, just do circles. People think that circles have some magical something to them. Circles are just all about math. If you do a circle, say you do approximately a one inch circle and you do a series of 20 of those circles down the length of the stone, for every circle you do, that edge is moving approximately three inches, right? If you do 20 of those circles down the stone, you've just moved that edge 60 inches. So you've taken an eight inch stone and you turned it into 60 inches. Pretty cool trick, huh fellas? Okay, those are circles. Now the third type of strokes are X strokes. And this is the majority of what I do. The first two I do just to start out with because they're a little more aggressive. When I do an X, I like to start up high with the edge perpendicular to the stone, start out high and come down across the stone like that. Make sure you keep the razor flat. You don't need much pressure. Actually, I start out with a little more pressure and on lighter pressure. And what you're gonna feel is when you first start out doing it, you're gonna feel there's a little bit of resistance. As you go, the resistance breaks. That's what you're feeling about. The stone will not talk to you. All these years and thousands of times I've done it, the stone's never whispered a word. You can feel it. 
All right, also what I wanna show you is when, when you, you know that your edge is right, watch the slurry. You're gonna wanna see when it squeegees, it should be real clean behind it and a real nice push in the water head. They call that undercut, that the edge is scooping up underneath the water. You know your edge is good. If you do this and you see a line, you know there's something on the edge there. This you can tell is nice and flat. Okay. That's it on that. Let me take and rinse this off and finish. Get some water on there. All right, this. You don't need slurry on, on, on these on the shaft and stones. I just did that for demonstration. You can do this at your bench. I'm just doing it on the, at the sink because it's easier for demonstration. <clears throat> right now, the resistance is broke. It just feels real nice and even all the way through. There's nothing changing. As I keep doing these, the feeling doesn't change. Sometimes, you know, you'll feel a little rough and it starts to change and get easier. So you keep going until it doesn't change. All right, so that's done. Let's check it and see how we did. Whoo, look at that. What you want to do with the tomato skin, test it all the way along. The edge, that part, middle, back, right at the heel there. All right, so this thing is ready to go. So that is the first part. That's all there is to it. Now the next part is going to be the finish stone. And what I've chose to do for this is use a natural stone for finishing. Why a natural stone? Well, I prefer natural stones because I think they impart a better feel to the edge. Um, you can go with another synthetic, but I think naturals uh, impart a, a better feel to the edge. I think there's something satisfying about taking a piece of steel that, uh, uh, that you rub on a rock that came from the earth and getting it sharp enough to shave your face. It's like a primal thing. So, all right, there were some choices. Let's get into this natural stone. There were some choices. There's many choices you can make. I kind of narrowed it down because I had some parameters in making this video because I wanted to keep the price down. You can go crazy on these stones. And I had four things that I said. First off, the stone has to be consistent when you use it. Time after time after time, razor after razor, it has to work every time. Number two, it has to be easy to do. It has to be easy, all right? Number three, the price had to be right. Uh, I chose $50. It was arbitrary, but I thought $50 was a good price point to pick. Uh, and finally, the fourth thing was that it has to be able to produce a great edge. Has to. All right, so let's go through the ones that I have here. First off, cauticles. Cauticles are great. I did a whole series on them. Um, but the thing with cauticles, they're not real consistent. I consider them actually to be a more advanced stone. Now, you can get great edges off a cauticle, but it takes work. Uh, you have to be able to master some of the other things first, the other stones. I, I think that cauticles are the most challenging. I said in my, in my cauticle video, they will humble you. So for that reason, I didn't choose a cautical ink, but you can get cauticles for $50 and under. Uh, the next stone, this stone is a, a Welsh slate. It's a purple, uh, purple stone, they call it, a dragon's tongue. There's a guy on eBay that sells them. Stone consistent, definitely works. Easy to do, and it's definitely cheap. Uh, I think the stone was $15. I think it costs more to ship it than the cost of the stone, but still, I think I probably have maybe $30, $30, $35 in it. Very nice stone, definitely fits the price point. The problem with this stone, edge is not great. It, it's a good edge, just not great. Uh, I threw this one in here. This is a Japanese natural stone, JNATS. Nats. Um, this is an exceptional stone from Chef Knives to Go. Uh, J Nats are usually very expensive in the hundreds of dollars. This one's a $70 stone. It uh, uh, um, is close to the price point. It definitely, it, you know, it can be consistent. It's fairly easy to do, um, but, and it gives great edges. But the thing with the Japanese stones is there is a learning curve to them. You have to use a slurry stone, you dilute it, and it's not hard to do, but th there is a learning curve to it, all right? So that leaves the final stone here. And that stone that I chose to be the stone to use, this stone is, is called an Imperia LaRocca, or I-L-R for short. 
I stumbled across the stone. Someone sent it to me to try when I was doing my codical videos, and I was really, really impressed. Uh, I've, I've done a bunch of razors on this. I've had at least a half a dozen stones uh, of these ILRs through my shop. Number one, super consistent, very, very consistent. Every, every razor that I've used and every one of these stones, they all work exactly the same, and it's real easy to do. Price point, $35. Wow, you can't beat that. A six by two stone, great for razors, 35 bucks. And this thing gives phenomenal edges. I just was emailed by a guy in, um, in the UK today. We were talking about Japanese stones and he said, you know, he says a while ago, my very first stone I bought, he says was an ILR. And he said, it gave a bloody wonderful edge, mate. And uh, I, I laughed because I said, you know, I'm gonna be filming a video tonight and it's funny that you mentioned that. ILR. Uh, to be honest with you, this was an easy choice. Very easy choice. So let me show you how easy this thing is to use. Um, this stone, there's going to be an insert in the stone. Uh, first off, let me say, when you get it, you have to lap it. You're going to do it the same way. You can do it on the, on the granite and the sandpaper. Um, uh, and that's fine. What I would suggest is they give you a slurry stone in there. After you lap it, take the slurry stone and rub it on there and just kind of smooth out those sandpaper marks. Uh, that would be about the only time that I would suggest that you use the slurry stone. But this is very simple to do. Oh, I was gonna say that the insert in there, it'll tell you that you, know, you go 1K and then you build the slurry and you dilute it, don't do that. I'm showing you how to do this. This is going to be the easiest. You're going to get the best edges. So you start with running water. If you saw my codical videos, it's going to be the same. Fairly thin stream of water. All you do are X's. And what you're going to notice is that this thing gets sticky really fast. I've had it finish off a, a, a razor in less than 10 passes. But you're going to probably do somewhere between 10 and 30, and it's going to get real sticky. There it goes. It's already getting real sticky there. And I'm real light on the pressure, and it, when it starts to get sticky, don't, don't force it. Just lighten up your pressure, and if it stops, ooh, stop. Go to the second phase, turn up the water, create a little bit more of a hydroplane effect. Real light. That's it. Now, you can finish right there. But I know there's some of you that, oh, I gotta go further. That couldn't have done it. I'm gonna take it further. All right, if you wanna take it further, the best way that I found to to max this out, take the razor to the strop. This is my, my uh, fire hose strop that I like so much. Oh, the irony. And real light, half a dozen. That's it. Come back to the stone. Now you're gonna notice that the stickiness went away, but it'll only be for about half a dozen passes and it's gonna come right back. Goes. Usually within 10, you're done. I'm not slowing it down, it just gets that sticky. Turn up the water once more, real light. That's all there is to it. That's all it's going to take to maintain your razors. These two stones that I'm showing you, these stones will last you literally a lifetime. If you have your razors that you're maintaining every, I don't know, a few dozen shaves every few months, even if you have a, a stable of razors, this will take care of them for a long time. You're going to have great edges. It's that simple. Wasn't that great? Shaving with a, with a straight razor is something really cool and, and, and great to do, but being able to put your own edge on the razor is really a sense of accomplishment. Being able to do, be really good at it, but being good at it and knowing that you put that edge on the razor, that's really great. That's really just awesome. Um, 
you know, I need to discuss some things specifically about this, this ILR stone. Uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't address some of the things that I've read and maybe some of the things that you've read about it, some of the negatives about the stone. Um, you know, it seems to be that there's like this love-hate relationship with the stone. There's guys that really love it, and there's guys that just have this visceral hate for the stone. And I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I have a friend on Facebook. I said, you know, when you see my next video, you're probably going to unfriend me. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, all right. So some of the things that, that I've heard that I've read that I, that, that I should think that I should touch on. Uh, one of the things about the stone is they say, well, you know, they don't tell us where the stone came from. Uh, rumors that it's from Italy. You know, I, I talked to the guy that sells these stones and he said that, you know, he doesn't want to tell because I, 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 you know, someone else goes in there and, and stakes his claim or whatever. I can respect that. I mean, to me, that doesn't really bother me. I really don't care where it came from. You know, it works good, good price point. I'm happy with it. Um, second thing, uh, I've heard that there are toxic inclusions in the stone. That means there's stuff buried within that stone that if you run your razor over it, it could uh, ruin the edge. Well, I've never seen any of these things in any of the stones that I've had. Um, it's, I've heard that maybe at the beginning of the production of these stones, when they went into sale, there may have been some things in the stone that possibly could have, you know, that, so uh, that, that is a possibility. But I've been assured by the company that sells them, 100% money back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied with that stone, no questions asked, refund your money. Um, so I, I think that pretty much clears the air of that. Uh, you know, there was someone that, that did a video on this stone and they said when they used it, they got chips in the razor, that the stone chipped the razor, these microchips, they showed a, a microscope slide of it. Um, well, when on my stones, I've tried it. I've tried to reproduce that effect of getting chips on the stone. And um, I haven't been able to do it. I tried everything. I tried slurry. I tried no slurry. I was actually fairly pretty rough with it. In fact, I went to the stone totally dry. I took and ran the razor over dry for 10 minutes, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not only could I not get any chips in the razor, it looked like it actually refined the, the, the edge even that much more. I think I'm going to have to do some, uh, some research on that. Um, but finally, uh, there seems to be some, uh, some question about the grit rating on the stone. Um, if you go on the website, and I'm going to put the link to the, to the stone in the description below, but if you go to the website, they're going to, you're going to see they'll, they'll rate the stone at a 12 to 15K. Uh, what I wanted to say first about this is that uh, a, a grit rating for a natural stone, it doesn't work, okay? Grit ratings are made for synthetic stones. Natural stones, there's too many different things going on in there to give it a grit rating, but, but I understand why they did it because people want to, you know, they, they want to know about where the stone is and that. So, so, they, so they gave it 12 to 15. I don't know how they came up with that. Uh, but there's people say, well, no, that's a six grid it's, or 6,000, it's 8,000. Well, I was up late at night playing with my near 1,000 power microscope, and this is what I came up with. Check it out. What I wanted to do was try and figure out or at least get a better idea of what really we could kind of come up with a grit rating. So what I did is I took a razor and... I took it all the way to a quarter micron spray. So this is what it looks like. This is a super refined, I mean, that's like, you know, quarter micron, that's, that's really, really fine. So you can see here what the edge looks like. That's really fine. So then what I did is I took that razor and I took it to an 8K. So now my reasoning here for doing this was because on this 8K here, I wanted to show that everything that you see here is a direct result of the 8K itself. There was nothing residual from 5K if you, you, know, you do any kind of progression. So I wanted it to be real fine and then take it to the 8K. So everything is 100% 8K. All right. So then what I did is I 
zeroed out the, the razor again. I went to, back to the, the 25 poly diamond and I did it on a 12K, all right? So 12K is that particular picture is of the Nano at 12K Superstone. And you can see that it gets quite refined here relative to the 8K, all right? So then what I did is I went a step further and I took it back to the 25 poly diamond, smoothed it out, and I did a, a 20K stone, the, uh, the 20K Sahiro, which by the way, is really a 30K or a half micron stone. So we can kind of see what the scratch pattern looks like as it becomes more and more refined. So then what I did is I took back to the 25, and then I ran it on the ILR, all right? So now this is the ILR. All right, so where does it fall? Well, let's take it and compare it to the 8K. Well, if you look at the edge of the 8 versus the, I, the ILR, definitely the ILR is finer than an 8. So we know that it's at least an 8K, all right? Let's take and compare it to the 12K. Well, as we compare it to the 12K, if you look here, the 12K versus the ILR, um, it's at least, the ILR is at least a 12K, okay? It's at least a 12K. I, I think that's pretty clear. I think it's a little bit finer than the 12K, but just for the heck of it, let's take it and compare it side by side with the 20K or the half micron. Let's put these right next to each other. What do you see? Well, I don't know. Looks pretty close to me. So when they rated this stone at a 12 to 15K, I th not only were they close, I think they underestimated it. I think it's at least a 15, if not closer to a 20. All right. Now these pictures were taken on a... Uh, on a ZY razor, it's a Chinese razor, it's not, you know, n nothing great. But what I wanted to show you is what I did, I took a, a, one of my fillies and I did the ILR on the filly. Now look at that. Look how refined that is. That's really pretty awesome. So, you know, this, this ILR can definitely give a refined edge. All right, now I know I just threw a whole bunch of slides up there. Let me throw this up there. And what you can do on this, if you want, it's kind of all of them together. If you want to hit your pause button, you can stare at all of those together. See how you do with that. Wasn't that great? Okay, so like I had already mentioned, I'm going to put the link down below for the ILR stone where to purchase that. Uh, also, I'll put a link for my Chef Knives to Go webpage. You can get the Shafted 8K along with other stuff that you've seen in the video. Um, as always, any questions, email me, drmatt357 at hotmail.com. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Enjoy your shave. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you soon.